Namaste everyone. Welcome to the Charvak podcast. Today's podcast was supposed to be recorded in Chennai a few days ago, but uh, we could not record it because camera angle was not right. So, I was like, 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 Abhas latest book hai, book batao logon ko Abhas thoda acha marketing karo dikhao book yes, so this is the book yes babar the chessboard king this is his latest book it is with penguin and uh, first of all abhas congratulations thank you so much and it's really nice to be here in your podcast finally we are able to do it yes yes so pehli book was on your journey from marxism this book is different this book is more about your journey uh, as now so you have changed a lot right as a writer w- would would that be a safe assumption to make yeah definitely i would say that it has been a transition and i do see that every hmm. month every every day every week every month i see hmm. that it's happening the more and more i read the more and more segments i cover hmm. the more and more changes do come and right now i see myself more into uh, the line of uh, tracing the biographies of the emperors especially right now what we have on the board is babar hmm. and of course the kings always fascinated me but i never thought that i will be writing around them but now it's happening and uh, so it it has started i don't know how further it will go ahead because uh, i'm sure that uh, further more nuances will be added into my own thought processes i am a very changed person what i was 4 years back or 5 years back rather mm. while he was writing modi again i am not the same person in terms of looking into the writing in terms of how i analyze the data how i look at the sources mm. i have become a person who is more driven into the primary sources looking to learn more and more languages so uh, it's a bit different now uh... your first book was about your journey as a marxist even in your introduction of the book you talk yeah. about your life journey you talk about how from a marxist you have now completely changed i think you've come more in the center if i was yeah. to say yeah. most of us people yeah. uh, i think we are all centrist and uh, if if there was to be a definitive political option or a social option we would all uh, begrudgingly be on one side of the political aisle let's be very clear yes. but it doesn't mean that we don't have objective uh, rigor when it comes to our work but purely from a writing perspective which one was tougher writing that first book on marxism your journey from marxism out jiske bare mein humne baat ki thi podcast pe or this one with this because this is like a proper historical historical analysis yeah. kind of a book right yeah so to put across a journey of transition from being a communist then not to be one hmm. uh, i see more like that rather than most of the time people will like to bracket it as left wing to right wing i say that from a communist to not being a communist and that journey uh, that book was a bit tougher to write hmm. uh, because uh, i was trying to trace upon my own journey i was hmm. trying to trace upon what i have been through but here while i was de- i am dealing with a character which is not me yeah uh, it's someone else and a lot of data of course it was more of a effort, in terms of efforts it was more of a effort giving because i had to translate the text i had to make my own notes then generate the own and then generate the story then put them all together do the whole circus of making notes footnotes etc etc so there was a lot of rigor into it a lot of efforts but in terms of difficulty level i would say that was a, a tougher part because i had to bring forth my own views the transition the book was smaller but the task was tougher the this was a larger thing but it had more of a effort but it was simpler i would say so we are, so first we'll stick to babar yeah because i also want to talk a, a little bit about uh, the mughal bit also because you mention it in the book and i i want to read that quote also that you mentioned in the book what are the primary sources if because you have uh, even when we were in chennai in casual conversations uh, what was that restaurant bay 146 bay 146 yeah udhar bhi hamari isi ke upar baat hui thi ki uh, how does one uh, define uh, writing good writing and you laid a lot of emphasis on relying on primary sources now in the um, in the ca- in the case of uh, 
this book what were the primary sources that you relied on so uh, largely the book is based on one primary source that is babar nama because it's about babar uh, but uh, uh, there is a distinction uh, the distinction is this that uh, most of the times when people say that hey i have got an access to the primary source hmm. uh, they they have got this belief in a faith after looking at the translation that hey i have got the translation of the manuscript so hmm. i have got the primary source hmm. but uh, when i began my journey to look at those sources i could see the differences in those translations too hmm. they were there and they may be because of some uh, political compulsion or uh the compulsion with the authority among uh, with whom they were working like mm. anand bebris sujan which is the most trusted translation of babar nama so i found that she was not in line with the other translators of the earlier phase so there are certain distinction like uh, i'll uh, use one term one term is kafir user of the term kafir mm. when you look for the persian manuscript uh it clearly talks about the term kafir when you look for the translation uh, look at the translation of anand bebris sujan in that the term is like pagans in bracket infidels so you can understand that one if a person is making a direct uh attribution to a person like kafir hmm. and then you say that you are pagan and then in bracket you put infidel or kafir it makes a lot of difference fair enough it does so uh, it made me realize that i need to go back to the primary source as in learn the language i did learn the language i can read the manuscripts now i may not be able to converse in the farsi but i can read the manuscripts now so i did that uh, circus of uh, picking the original manuscript right now we have uh, uh, so the the uh, the first uh, babar nama which was written actually by babar himself it was written in chaktai turkic so after that that was translated into persian by uh, it was commissioned by akbar for and it was done under the guidance of abul fazl and that is a manuscript which we have in an illustrated form with all those illustrations the pictures which people often share yeah. which is there in a, a national museum uh, which is in delhi and so i got the access of it and i began to read the manuscript and i met my whole story like you translate you make the notes that what it is you make the translation and then you have to build your own story otherwise you will only keep quoting it directly and then it will it can fall into the plagiarism that you just can't then what is the other thing you are doing if you don't have an opinion about something if you are not uh building your own narrative based on that very source then maybe that you have not done any addition to what was existing earlier so that way uh babar nama happened to be the my primary source apart from that uh, there were many places where i had to rely upon a lot of secondary sources because right now my interest was not to go into the details of primary sources for certain aspect like i am um, talking about the tribes uh, whom with whom babar is interacting at times like when he gets into kabul there's a tribes of uh, the junbils uh, there are some they he passes through a place called kafiristan so i am giving the history of those tribes so for that i relied upon the secondary sources right now because i didn't see uh, much of a merit to delve into primary source right now because my subject here was babar so i uh, so those secondary sources came in along with uh, babar nama is a primary source and a bit of tertiary sources as in <coughs> a bit of writing of the stalwarts which happened to be in the early 20th centuries so that largely comprises of my sources hmm. for the book now in your book you talk about something i want to read this excerpt yeah. from you people who are wondering yahan kya dekh raha hu bhai laptop hai book khuli hai pad raha hu so one may argue that babar may not have used the term mogal at all and hence the different term but that too is not the reality babar has used the term mogal mogal and m u g a l the three yeah. different yeah. spellings you have written more than 400 times in the babar nama drawing a clear distinction in fact he has the worst opinion of the mughal clan and clan and then you have written so coming back to the name timur never liked to see himself as mughal even though both him and chingiz jengiz khan ya chingiz khan jo hum log bolte hain usko chingiz khan had a common ancestor tumanaya khan 
Yeah. Timur was in the 10th generation while Cengiz was in the 5th generation. Babur's ancestors were sharply distinguished from the classical Mongols, Mughals, insofar as they were oriented towards Persian rather than Turco-Mongol culture. According to John Joseph Saunders, Timur was the product of an Islamized and Iranized society and not steppe nomadic Mongols. You have spent a lot of time in the initial part of the book where you are... Uh, I would not use uh, obsessed because that's a wrong word, but you are very finicky about it. If my and correct me if I'm wrong, my memory serves me correct. You spent like good five, six pages on this topic. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of pages for yeah, one one yeah. small thing on a book. Yeah. Because it's a giant book, but you are page. I was like, you know, page like dalaisne So why? Why? First of all, why and and where did this Babur Mughal hai, hmm. where did this originate? So, uh, it's very, I found it very uh, astonishing when I came across this information uh, that Babur never recognized himself as Mughal. And in fact, uh, the umpire also which established, it was Timurid or Timuria Gurkhanian. Hmm. So, uh, basically, the Timuria or Timurid is, means that you are drawing a connection with the Taimur. And uh, when you say the Gurkhania, uh, it means son-in-law. So, uh, th- so uh, it's the story goes back to Taimur. But before I go, get to that story, it's very important to tell that uh, it's uh, you while you're trying to talk about certain clan, while you're talking trying to talk about certain person, it's very important that you portray them at least as how they wanted them to be themselves be portrayed as because they have a very because they have a very clear distinction as, as i have also pointed it out that babar is making a distinction between himself and his people and the mughals so if you call them mughals all the time then perhaps you will not be able to see that distinction hmm. right so and in the Babur's opinion, Mughals are not very uh, sophisticated people. And they are the people... Uh, that's well, the, I, I will not uh, debate Babur on that. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> Babur says that uh, Mughals are... Uh, wherever the Mughals go, they uh, there is unrest. There is the, the, the era, the period is not peaceful. They will be, bring disturbances. This is what Babur is talking about the Mughals. And Mughals are the people who necessarily are drawing the direct decency or they are directly uh, falling in the clan of Changiz or Genghis, uh, right? So, and the story goes back to Taimur because Taimur was a very ambitious person. He yeah. wanted to be a caliph. Uh, not many would know. Like even Akbar had this aspiration later on. Yeah, who Akbar ki book mein padenge. Yes. <laughs> so, Taimur had this aspiration of becoming a caliph and he also wanted to become the Khan. But he can't become the Khan because it doesn't come from the lineage of Okay. Oh, if you don't mind me yeah. asking, just for academic yeah. sake, what is the difference between a Khan and a Caliph? So basically, a Caliph is a person who leads the whole Islamic... Islamic, Khilafat. Yeah, the whole brotherhood. The, just so the Khalifa. 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 Yeah. So the Khalifa is a person who is head of whole of the Islamic... Uh, so uh, like Abu Bakr was a Khalifa and uh, uh, Usman was a, Uthman was a Khalifa and so on and on. So after... Prophet Abu Bakr was the first Khalifa, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was Prophet Muhammad's best yes. friend. Yeah. So whoever took, whoever walked into the shoes of Prophet Muhammad, but not exactly Prophet Muhammad because he's considered to be Prophet. So one who leads them after that, he was a Khalifa. So this guy, Taimur, can never be the one because he needs a certain family based consideration. He needs to come from certain lineage. Of course, he even can't be the Khan because he doesn't come from the lineage of Changiz, right? So, but he's very ambitious. He wants both of them. So he propagates a story of a superstitious story that I do have. Uh, I am almost equivalent to a prophet or something. So, and those are the period when we're talking about the medieval era and all. The mythology spread quite fast, and there was no concept of blasphemy as such. That agar raja ne bol diya ya amir ne bol diya to bol diya it's done. So his dictate uh, mera vachan hi sashan, and that's how it really worked. Mm. So. Taimur made uh, this mythology propagated that I am one like a prophet. So he got certain power. Yeah. And he married into the house of Changiz Khan. Hmm. So uh, then that's why he called himself Gurkhania, son-in-law. 
so by becoming the son in law he says that uh, now i have become the son in law and he takes the title of amir uh, people shouldn't confuse this amir by uh, the rich, rich. One. Uh, yeah uh, amir is a title e m i r or a m i r what whatever so he took that title this would be like a m e e r yes actually so he takes this title and he puts a puppet uh, in the in the khanate or the the in the place of the khans and he is now controlling the uh, the mongols as well and he is almost like a caliph of course not in large islamic realm but he has attained this and the empire what he established is he calls it timurid gurkhania so and he had this character of being very persianized because mongols are a very different tradition mongols were very secular people they killed everyone without asking that which religion you belong to so matlab so, selected darinde nahi the proper uh, darinde the yeah and so <laughs> like in most of the right circles genghis khan or chengiz khan is famous for being a uh, one of the largest persecutor of the muslims but certain group of muslims gave him a title of the defender of religion because he saved certain muslims so and this all is recorded this comes from a sacred book of mongols which records everything so they never made this distinction that which religion you come from you are my subject i'll save you i found you problematic i'll kill you this was a, a very clear way of look so, so so mongols in the sense what marxists say were the political people to some extent we can say that they didn't uh, they just wanted to loot you butcher you yeah. maim you yeah. create mountains of khopdis yeah, yeah, yeah. but they didn't care if you are hindu muslim sikh isai uh, didn't matter so what what is very interesting that in the era of changes uh, the though you can do everything what you want to do but sharia won't apply and uh, the halal was banned in the era of the changes khan and his people so apart so in, in terms of halal it's not about that certification people shouldn't get confused it is the process of how you slaughter the slaughter animal. animals so it was prohibited so apart from that everything is cool whatever whichever way you want to pray you can do it and um, the things began to change so it's like mohammed bin salman <laughs> this time ka <laughs> so, actually it's very interesting that uh, uh, most of the times people have an opinion that uh, islamic realm kept on increasing and increasing but there were certain phases like reconquista happened right spain uh, in, in the spain when it became al andalus uh, so after that when they started to convert back when reverted back then all the mosque uh, all the churches which were converted in the mosque this began to get it back and now this was the era in the mongol period uh, when we walk further that's when the hegelu khan is going on to ravage the whole islamic uh, civilization he, and baghdad is sacked entirely the caliph is killed and now it has happened it feels that islam will cease to exist because the mongols were very barbaric and whatever they would do and that time the conversion to islam has not happened and then the guy comes in is the brother of uh, hegelu khan his name is um, uh, barke khan he's a cousin brother and he happens to be the son of the eldest son of genghis khan who has got converted to islam he's the first guy to get converted and he's converted by a sufi and when he gets converted and when he uh, and he comes back home and he observes that uh, the my brother hegelu khan is going to dest- uh, destroying the places he has sacked uh, baghdad entirely uh, he has uh, killed the caliph or the khalifa right so he's very angry and he talks to his father that i don't like this and you know because islam is a great religion and we shouldn't and so on and on but uh, uh, the, his father says that you know no mongol crosses the sword against the other mongol mm. so you can't spill the blood the blood doesn't spill among the mongol clan but he doesn't listens and they go on to into the battle and hegelu khan is uh, defeated and when he defeat is defeated so islam and the islamic civilization and the mongol mongolia civilization uh, merge and then the persecution of christian happens like anything which i have mentioned in my book that the uh, and so basically uh when you say that someone is timurid so they are very clear about the religious angle they are very clear about it they many of them are religious fanatic too they have the agenda very clear but the mongols are the secular people so there was a guy uh, dr lock was often compared with changiz khan and um, uh, there's a certain uh, dr lock is uh, happens to be the guru of voltaire 
so uh, and this a lot of colonial writing which was seen chengiz khan is a great light because he was very secular but at the same time he was a great expansionist he killed expanded and was secular so and when the europeans came and they began to write about uh, the the people uh, say babar etc they saw race in it they didn't see the culture because by the race they were mongols at the end of a day so even when while these guys were ruling they were not calling themselves timurid europe when the europeans were writing the books about them they were calling them mongols and somehow that carried forward with uh, the because we uh, t- took it from the europeans we never uh, read it from the primary sources so we continue to call them the mongols so yeah. isn't it that from the mother side they are one dynasty and from the father side they are another dynasty yes yes right yeah and uh, they but they wanted themselves to be recognized more by the culture because by the ge- by the gene even or the by the genetics or uh, by that way even taimur is a mongol hmm because they have a common ancestor too yeah but he never recognized himself as a mongol uh, he recognized himself more as a persian so that's why even when the mughals or the timurids rather came in their court language was persian not anything else Uh, the question always arises: Why did they actually choose a Persian, not something else? That was the reason. So, was there any so-called Mughal who liked being called Mughal in their entire lineage or history? Yeah, um, no, not these people, not these Babur onwards. No one. In fact, uh, Aurangzeb even didn't recognize himself as Mughal. He recognized as Turani. Wow. हमारे हिस्टोरियन क्यों मुगल मुगल करी जाते हैं बिकॉज वी कैरीड फ्रॉम वेयर द यूरोपियंस लेफ्ट एंड इट्स नॉट द फॉल्ट ऑफ द लेफ्ट और इवन बिकॉज इवन द पीपल सो कॉल्ड पीपल ऑन द राइट दे वर फॉलोइंग द रेफरेंसेस या इवन दे रोट दे कॉल द मुगल्स एंड ऑल द बुक्स ऑफ द ग्रेट स्टॉल वर्ड्स दे हैव बीन एड्रेसिंग दम सो आई थॉट दैट इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मेक दिस डिस्टिंगशन बिकॉज द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू करेक्ट द नेम्स एज एन हाउ दे वॉन्ट टू बी रिकोगनाइज एज बिकॉज if you want to deal with the history you will come across a lot of mughal references too and when the, we clearly have two different brackets why not use it why do we want to uh, deform it in different way now one more thing because you mention it in the book i am touching upon it nahi to main nahi karta okay but uh, you mention in in the introduction and in fact i went forward now i've come back a few <laughs> okay. pages so you have said uh, the tale of the chandela rajput king vidyadhar and how he altered the advance of butchikan butchikan matlab murtiyan todne wala yes. basically mahmud of ghazni is not known to the world we are still to be exposed to elaborate details around the warriors like martanda verma under whose leadership the european powers were crushed by an asian power for the first time now why i mentioned this is that you spoke about islam was not always winning yeah there have been big chunks yeah in islam's conquest or islamism's conquest yeah. if i was to use the proper technically correct yeah. word islamism's conquest where they've lost now even if you look at the role of islamism in india with uh wo pehle wala kaun tha jiski marne ki do story hai yaar ibn qasim दो स्टोरी है ना एक है कि उसको मार डाला और एक है उसको डाला और बंदी बना के लेके गए ये ये इनकी हिस्टोरियंस में मैंने पढ़ा है ये सब तो मेरे को चचनामा के तो मेरे पास नोट्स भी थे आई यूज टू सिट डाउन एंड मेक माय ओन नोट्स ऑफ द होल डैम टेक्स्ट सो कैन आई कट यू हियर जस्ट फॉर सो इवन चचनामा आई आई सी अ प्रॉब्लम इन दैट बिकॉज़ ओके Chachnama was a text uh, because mm-hmm. I, I am trying to look at it from a very objective point of view. Uh, many friends on the so-called right-wing spectrum may not like it, but mm-hmm. I have serious doubts on Chachnama too. Was Farishta ka? Uh, it's not by Farishta. It was uh, Chachnama appeared uh, earlier. I have forgot the name of the author of it. Mm-hmm. It was commissioned by um, uh, a king, uh, a, uh, a Turk king in mm-hmm. India, and it was done in a period. almost 6 uh, 500 years 5 centuries after mm. the incidents happened mm. and the guy just said that i have referred to a particular arabic text we don't know what that arabic text was no one has seen it right so mm. uh, church nama's authenticity is at time so uh, we need to get very objective about historiography 
because historic when i am watching for the primary sources primary contemporary sources mm-hmm. and then again if i fall into this trap of picking a narrative uh, which is 5 centuries later so uh, that gives a lot of loose ends to uh, to my own way to approach historiography so usme bhi pro- kafi problem hai and al balduri uh, wrote for the first time about uh, the qasim and he did it in 892 or 893 and it is happening again 180 years after the said incidents so uh, there there are i'm not saying this may not have happened i am certainly have a belief that this would have happened but perhaps we don't exactly know that how it happened that's why we have this contradictions of stories too yeah because the chachnama itself mentions two yeah, versions yeah. of uh, death of what happened to Ka- kasim yeah and kasim is not a big guy in al baldur stick he becomes a big guy in uh, chachnama which appears after 5 century mm-hmm. so uh, like uh, in case of all this prophetic figures also we see the suddenly the bulge up uh, the bulge up into a great uh, persona suddenly and same happened with this character of uh, bin kasim too as all of a sudden he becomes a big character so in my opinion uh, i don't know whether I, i would end up being right or not right now my hypothesis is that perhaps even about him what has been told was a very exaggerated account too might have been magar wo to yaar see in fact i don't know if you remember when this whole 40000 temple discussion was going on and we were talking of the yeah. record i had told you at that time also i forgot the name of that damn historian who was looking at the record of aurangzeb he had come on the brown pandits podcast also okay like exaggerations are a part of ancient writing yeah whether hindu muslim anyone like yeah. these muslim chroniclers including babar yeah when they write about i went there and i smashed thousands yeah. बाद में अगर तुम हिस्टोरिकल रिकॉर्ड निकालोगे उस जगह की पॉपुलेशन भी नहीं उतनी थी सो बिकॉज ऑल द बैटल्स विच वॉज जो विच यूज टू हैपन इट वॉज डन बाई द मसल पावर इट वॉज वेरी डिफरेंट यू विल गेट एग्जॉस्टेड सो ऑल दिस एंड सर्टनली वेन वी लुक एट द मुस्लिम हिस्टोरियोग्राफी स्पेशली बिकॉज वी डोंट हैव अ लॉर्ड ऑफ इंस्टेंसेज से वेन यू लुक एट द मुस्लिम हिस्टोरियोग्राफी स्पेशली फ्रॉम द एबेसिक पीरियड they are very exaggerated uh, accounts and in fact a lot of people say that the more the battles the more the war the more the hadiths were produced mm. the more the so more the manual were produced so that you can further get uh, more excited and do more for the cause mm. so that certainly was a narrative and it's very tough to rely on these uh, documents and what this contemporary sources do say that uh, you, if the contemporary sources are there even if they are exaggerated at least you will get to the truth the facts would be there for you we get the truth about their intention intentions and their not the numbers theological pinning yeah intention to very clear hai yeah uh, so if somebody historically says that they were not driven by religiosity yeah that they are lying yeah what we cannot decipher is that in their religious zeal how much they could damage which is why i want to i wanted to read that quote yeah. because the entire narrative that has been peddled by what i called rhetoricians yeah. on all sides of the aisle yeah the left loves this word you know the left uses this word pamphleteer pamphleteer ye to pamphleteer hai sabse zyada pamphleteering left mein hoti hai yeah marxists are the biggest pamphleteers yeah they 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 cook up rubbish i will tell you which see i have not read persian so i will not claim that but i have read eliot and dawson ka entire volume entire wo dekh raha tu udhar history and culture rc yeah. mujumdar pure volumes yeah. pure chaate hai maine start se end tak pure start se end tak maine chaate so aur bhi main jitna pad sakta tha maine padha जितने भी मेरे को एक्सेस मिलता था आरसी मजुमदार के और भी वर्क्स थे वो भी मैंने पढ़ने की कोशिश की ये सब मैं बात बता रहा हूँ दस बारह तेरह चौदह पंद्रह साल पहले एलियट एंड डॉसन इज लाइक नाइन थाउजेंड पेजेस और समथिंग भयंकर है बिफोर द बुक दे दे राइट तुम हमेशा बोलते हो अंग्रेजों ने इतना इंडियंस को मारा ये देखो तुम्हारे को मुसलमानों ने क्या किया 
शर्म भी नहीं आती है बोलते हुए तुम बोल रहे हो हम जलाद है मगर ये भी जलाद है so the problem where uh, what i see uh, of course uh, what uh, dawson was trying to do was just wo bolte na ki theek hai hum to the hi lekin usse bade bhi koi aur the to uske bare mein tum baat hi nahi karte ho so that to some extent is true but he saying it it becomes a bit that main to hu lekin and soch hue kha kar billi haj ko chali exactly <laughs> no <laughs> ab yahan problem ek aur aata hai dusra pro- wo problem ye hai when we talk about the estimates because we are talking about exaggeration so mm. i thought that this is a good point to bring about the estimates ab ek issue hua tha that case lal did an exercise of uh, analyzing that how many people would have perhaps perished perished ka matlab uh, not exactly that how many would have died mm. but it would have included as sex slaves and everything yeah, everything yeah, yeah. taken together so when he brought this number mm. and then his whole thing was criticized through again marxist pamphlets it was so he said that uh ye ke early 50s ya in mai bhul gaya 70s mein 70s mein it, it came in 70s 70s 74 mein and in 75 irfan abi did a whole uh, it, it was not a ye wo dr irfan abi ye wale irfan abi naye wale nahi naye wale nahi nah, wale nah, purane wale ayodhya wale the og yeah the original pamphlet yes hai. yes <laughs> ayodhya wale wo uh, inscription ka हर चीज में उन्हीं की काला कांडी होती है सो द रिजॉइंडर ही इट वाज नॉट अ रिजॉइंडर बट इट वाज जस्ट नेम कॉलिंग टू केएस लाल बट केएस लाल डिड अ रिजॉइंडर ही सेड दैट आई एम डूइंग एन एस्टीमेट बेस्ड ऑन व्हाट दे आर सेइंग दे एज इन द मुस्लिम हिस्टोरियंस देम से दिस एस्टीमेट एस्टीमेट इज नॉट अ फैक्चुअल नंबर एक्चुअल नंबर इफ यू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम यू डू योर मैथ कम विद एन एस्टीमेट वी कैन टॉक अबाउट इट बट विदाउट एन एस्टीमेट यू कांट ब्लेम मी दैट आई हैव डन अ right thing or wrong thing you should come up with a statement i'm not claiming to be the rightiest one that maybe yeah I'm, like i don't agree with the ks lal number i mean yeah. i just don't find it, it digestible it can it can be but the point is that like uh, someone asked me once that why are you quoting uh, angus madison uh, for uh, so uh, because uh, uh, there is there is issues in terms of how he has calculated a gdp based on population or but my point was that if you are trying to build a narrative they say if you are giving a narrative that in the mughal period or the timurid period hmm. the gdp share of bharat was 25% then i will certainly bring angus madison which says that in 1000 it was 28% and in 180 it was 32% i may agree or disagree to it hmm. i am not saying that i am completely aligning aligning to his views hmm. so if you are trying to counter something you will have to produce certain work to counter it just the rhetoric can't help for the academic cause mm. and somewhere uh, left has lost the battle in that yeah i won't say that all the time their intention of course there many times like if you read the works of mohammed irfan abi uh, irfan abi's father mohammed the uh, abi you will see that intentions can be very clearly seen that where he's all the praise given to ghazni and he just so uh, of course he has not been as uh, uh, terrible as uh, uh, dr irfan habib but still he is singing apologia for ghazni that uh, it brings some causes that why he did so and all but yeah unless you do some work on it you don't uh, unless you don't don't bring an estimate unless you don't do your own job about it you can't blame others that why they have done this hmm and my problem with this entire thing is is also whitewashes the efforts of hindu communities yeah to fight against him like ibn qasim comes on 600 something something or 720 jo bhi hai 712 727 aise aise kuch date hai theek hai wo tabhi aata hai magar ghajni gauri to 1100 ka aata hai na yes 1100 ka aata hai na to beech mein 4000 400 saal sorry 4000 nahi sorry 400 saal 400 years ab wo log dandiya to nahi khel rahe the na yeah wo log aate the aur hum inko maarte the yeah और ये लोग वापस जाते थे नाउ द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम इज हमारे पूरे रिकॉर्ड कीपिंग में हमने कोई बात ही नहीं की उसके बारे में ट्रू वो अशोका ग्रेट है yeah. अकबर दीने इलाई मेरे को कोई अकबर से इतनी पर्सनल घिन भी नहीं है मैं फॉर द रिकॉर्ड स्टेट करना चाहता हूँ मैं तुझे कितनी बार बोल चुका हूँ yeah. मुझे इतनी घिन नहीं है अकबर से uh, मेरी घिन स्टार्ट और एंड औरंगजेब पे होती है 
मेरी उधर ही खत्म होती है बाकी मैं इतना जबकि आई नो यू हैव शोन इन योर बुक यू हैव शोन जहांगीर टू बी मतलब काफी दरिंदा है वो सो आई एम श्योर दैट द वर्क ऑन जहांगीर इट द डे इट सीज अ लाइट इट विल बिकॉज़ आई वाज नॉट नोइंग मच अबाउट इट एंड इट ऑल हैपेंस दैट व्हेन वी ओपन अप द डॉक्यूमेंट्स then the things come up and the best thing about the people uh, like i see myself as a very rationalist person so what happens that i am not into a person worshiping ho kya hota hai ki agar mujhe fact mil gaya uske khilaf so i am done theek hai wo sahi hai wo tatthya 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 se upar kuch nahi hai because history owes to none but to, to the truth right truth and to the people of that era aapko unki kahani satya mein se batani hai hmm. so that's how it needs to be and many times people get emotionally tied up into the characters he or she can be anyone it, this character can be anybody it can be an indian character or it can be a character from central asia and we do live uh, those emotions and at times when we see that a different image of that person has come up it hurts like i was very open and vocal about it uh, to be called out that i use this term 40000 temples but when i came to know i became very clear that no it's 1800 was as because if i will quote sr goel it has to be 1800 if i'm quoting him i'm not saying that that me is the truth so basart yeah to be precise that's some something that the, like that there is a number and now dr corner l says that agar us pe thoda sa add kiya to usko double kar do zyada zyada but it cannot be lot more than that because you know the uh, the problem in that is that we discount again the ability of our community men the hindus to yeah. rebuild temples because yeah. even and you show that in your writings vikram has shown that beautifully in his writings that these people would break our temples fir ye log chale jate hain thoda har time baithe rehte hain hum wapas bana lete the wo mandir right bahut sare fir wapas aate aur bolte are ye fir sudarte nahi hai inhone fir bana liya and then they would so this is why uh, i read that bit was like history is a very complex subject but yeah. now coming to this fellow babar ये क्या बन रहा है इज मतलब सो आई वॉन्ट आई आई जेन्यूनली वॉट कन्फ्यूज विद दिस बिल्ड इन योर बुक मैंने तेरे को इसके लिए तो अभी व्हाट्सएप भी किया था मैंने बोला ये ये बंदा मतलब आई मीन यू यूज द वर्ड बाई सेक्शुअल हियर या आई एम क्वाइट क्लियर अबाउट इट बिकॉज सो दिस इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी हेयर है सो वेरी रिसेंट वन बिकॉज द प्रिंट रैन एंड एक्सेप्ट ऑफ दिस पार्ट कैसा लग रहा है गाड़ियां खा के सो आई डोंट नो पीपल गॉट वेरी क्रेजी अबाउट इट दैट द द काइंड ऑफ अपोलोजिया व्हिच दे बिगन टू सिंग वाज लाइक दिस दैट यू नो बाबर इज हैविंग सेइंग दैट ही हैज गॉट लव और द पैशन फॉर समबडी हुज नेम इज बाबरी बाय द वे सो बाबर को बाबरी ही मिला आई आई डोंट नो वेदर हिज नेम वाज बाबर बिकॉज़ ही कॉल्स दैट गाय बाबरी राइट सो when he is talking about him he is talking about love he is talking about passion there's some amazing couplets what he has written for uh, and babar was by the way a very good poet yeah yeah he oh, was he was poetry achi us yeah and lo- because it uh, reflects on the metaphors he uses right so he is full of compassion he is full not only he is full of passion he is having uh, uh, he is shy with babri too uh, right and he is having almost a, and he is stating it in the same segment when he is married for the first time why he will relate the two case like he is not happy to go into the uh, the room of uh, or the place where his wife this is the first marriage uh, first yeah he doesn't wants to walk into the room of the suit where the the the, the, the she's living right but at the same time he's saying that i am having love and compassion for a boy right uh i am very passionate to see him uh, when i when i my eyes meet his eyes i feel very shy and suddenly my eyes just fall down so he's talking about these things when of course when he is writing on autobiography he's not going to detail out about the trait which could exactly tell you that what being bisexual means right mm. of course he will not write those explicit things but certainly the emotions and bisexual most of the time people do tend to relate the thing into the action bisexual is a nature it's a nature basically and which is very clearly reflected from how he is writing uh, into the yeah, babar but he was a chota child and he was not too old to uh, babar babar is just 17 year old by then and he is 12 
बाबर को मैं माइकल जैक्सन भी नहीं बोल सकता <laughs> तो खुद ही बच्चा था बट आई वॉन्ट रीड दिस इफ यू डोंट माइंड सो बाबर हेज गिवन एन अकाउंट इन इज बाबर नामा ऑफ हाउ ही वॉज अ शाई पर्सन and it is even more interesting is that he has blamed the shyness on the fact that it was his first marriage what a reason to be shy matlab yeah, maan uh, so what a uh, weird reason but theek hai these were people of their time his assertion of court first marriage makes one believe that he was foreseeing more marriages that deni padegi which was an obvious trait of the society he belonged to because of his shyness and modesty as babar has claimed in the babar nama he visited her her only once every 2 or 3 weeks but it was not very late when he stopped with those bi monthly visits to babar has written in the babar nama that he had begun to lose inclination and attraction for aisha sultan begum and then babar's mother khanum intervened as she was not at all happy with her son's actions upon his mother's insistence babar resumed his visits to aisha but only once every 7 weeks or so Baba's writings make us believe that something was wrong in his marriage with Aisha. What was it? Perhaps Baba was bisexual and more inclined towards men than women. At least in that period, Baba does mention that in those leisurely days, he had discovered a strange inclination in himself. He writes, "Quote: I maddened and afflicted myself for a boy in the camp bazaar. His very name, Babri, fitting in. Up till then, I had no inclination for anyone. Indeed, of love and desire." either by hearsay or experience i had not heard i had not talked relating to the situation he composed the following verse originally in persian may none be as i humbled and wretched and sick love sick no beloved as thou art to me cruel and careless it is a sad life ho gayi hai iski bechare ki see honestly i am not saying this is right or this is the correct yeah. way of looking at it i think he could be gay उसको छित्रोल की होगी चुपचाप शादी कर बच्चा चाहिए मेरे को यू नो हाउ दे वर एट दैट टाइम फॉर देम लिनियज इज एवरीथिंग और उसने बोला होगा ठीक है यहाँ पे डिंग डोंग कर लेते हैं बच्चा पैदा कर लेते हैं और बाकी मैं बिहाइंड द सीन्स करता रहूंगा इट वॉज समथिंग क्वाइट रेगुलर बिकॉज आई ट्वीट इट समथिंग टूडे इट वॉज इट इज अगेन फ्रॉम माई बुक सो नॉट एक्सैक्टली फ्रॉम द बुक बट आई जस्ट पैराफ्रेज इट आई जस्ट ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन दैट देर वॉज अ a uh, rebel and the revolt in samarkand uh, against one of the cousin of babar because he was seeing the guys hmm as in so it certainly was uh, it certainly w- was a matter that people with that trait were existing in that era too it certainly cannot be questioned and at the same time this was not seen in a very great light by the society which Obviously. also reflects from how homophobic they were yeah yeah, yeah. and the, you you just imagine in samarkand and in 1496 a revolt has happened because of just one of this nature that uh, the uh, the uh, i forgot the name of the guy so he is uh, looking at the sons of one of very senior officials hmm. so this is hurting the society and the tarkhanis and samarkandis are up against the people uh, up against the r- royal people and the timur they've said do a rebel against the timurids but like i am not surprised see homosexuality is as ancient like even the arthashastra talks about yeah. a punishment for homosexuality yeah. well if there is a punishment for homosexuality the quran talks about homosexuality ka hadith hai uski yeah. punishments ke bare mein bible to stone the homosexual yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, bolta it's hai it's very clear yeah it's very clear that means it was a part of society so isn't it so, amazing that matlab so i was more amazed when uh, you know uh, because it's it was getting a bit ironical uh, at at a point i was trying to see a great poet in babar hmm. and uh, uh, because the except which was put across in the print that also had that couplet written so that is expressing that how good a poet babar was it was beautiful poetry actually yeah. and at the same time then uh, we see uh, the straight where i am i am claimed that uh, perhaps he was a bisexual and so this should have been 
somewhere celebrated by the liberal people but uh, the you got attacked the the hatred which the article uh, or the except got it was so funny to look at that which side you were actually trying to sit at it was not at all clear just because uh, babar because he's a, a muslim king he can't be so it cannot work that way no because the truth is truth yeah because sometimes the truth is inconvenience uh, or shouldn't be inconvenient to the liberals because uh, this uh, yeah i mean the first people to pick this up must be the gays for palestine folks you know? <laughs> I mean I the first thing I was like good for the gays for Palestine you know they'll be like we have finally found our <laughs> homosexual in Babar although he's bisexual to yeah. <laughs> lgbt ke to rainbow mein to aa hi jata hai na coalition mein and i was like i'm like fine and but doesn't it show the hypocrisy yeah. that even at that time uh, be, because i want to segue into the next bit uh, which is uh, babar the bewda <laughs> No, I will call it Babar the Bewda because <laughs> that's what he is. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure, to be fair to him, he had a lot of guilt about it. Also. Yeah, yeah, he, was. he had a lot of guilt, like the term like sin and all. So this is this must be Babar sitting there. I was like, <laughs> "Shut up, boss, bad man. Peg do a glass." He's like, "One minute, stop. One glass peg, kill me. One glass peg, kill me. That kind of a thing Babar must be doing." But it says a lot about this society. Like, but let's talk about Babar the Bewda. So, what was it with Bewda? Because उसको Bewda से क्या problem थी? He started drinking uh, very late, very uh, late, approaching towards thirty, yeah. and uh, so almost in the ending phase of his life uh, because he lived very short. So uh, he, so um, like uh, most of the other Muslim rulers or the royal blood, hmm. he was also brought up with those virtues that uh, you know this is how. islam is practiced like if you observe when he's talking about his father so he makes the references about how he really never misses to offer the namaz five times a day even during the battles All right he gives an example that at the time of battle you were exempted to not do the namaz but he does it holistically so and he has learned quran also from his father though his father passed away uh, only at the age uh, only when babar was just 11 year old 11/12 we don't know exactly so he had taken a lot of virtues from his father he uh, saw his father in a very steam light and he tried to walk into the shoes of his father most of the times and uh, because he lost his father at a very early age he had this thing in the back of the mind that you know because um when you are 17 when you are 18 19 still you are very tender age and in that era when the awakening happens very late you are not very like in the time of now people can get matured maybe quite early but may not be the case that time mm. he always has this remnant in the memories of his father which always lingered with him and which kind of abstained him for from exploring into the ideas of getting alcoholic uh in fact uh, maybe that the verse which is writing about babari too is also he is though he is not expressed the guilt out rightly but we don't know that whether he is having guilt about it or not maybe that he was having guilt even for that hmm ho maybe, sakta hai maybe so uh, he was seeing alcoholism in a completely contempt and when he began to do it he was saying that oh what kind of sin i have done but you mentioned there wine parties here yeah it was a massive wine parties it is a, the party which i mentioned is done by the mirza the mirza yeah yeah so i want to read this yeah. this is must <laughs> after a couple of days when babar visited badi us zaman mirza after the midday prayer an elegant matlab namaz padhne ke baad char botal vodka var va mast log hai log namaz padhte the ja ke aur baad mein bewda marte the i like these people along with multiple variants of wine brushets of goose and fowl and all kinds of viands were set on perfect table linen mirza's wine parties and entertainment activities were very known babar chose not to drink even a drop of wine at this event he has mentioned in the babar nama that no one pressured him to drink it could simply mean that in general people will insist on non drinkers consuming alcohol the babar is me kyunki mere sare dost bewde hain aur main akela udhar baitha rehta hu baat same hai yeah तो मे, मेरे दोस्तों ने क्या निकाला कि इसको बुलाना तो है ये दोस्त है तो अभी इसका काम क्या करें ये तो पीता नहीं है तो आई एम द डेजिग्नेटेड ड्राइवर नाउ मेरे सारे बेवड़े हैं और मैं गाड़ी चला रहा हूँ दैट्स वॉट आई डू फॉर माई फ्रेंड बाबर आई कैन रिलेट टू दिस बाबर इज लाइक सालो बेवड़ो 
मैं अकेला बैठा हूँ तुम्हारे साथ बट इट डेंड मतलब दिस इज फैसिनेटिंग बिल्ड बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट रीड दिस ऑल्सो वेन कासिम बेग हर्ड ऑफ बाबर बींग फोर्स टू ड्रिंक ही गॉट अ बिट एंशियस एंड ऑफेंडेड he soon sent someone to zunoon beg the man carried some advice both zunoon and muzaffar mirza the message was harsh and diplomatic but impactful and plain enough there upon the mirzas never pressed babar to have wine again when badiu zaman mirza heard of muzaffar hosting a party for babar he called babar and some of his trusted men to a feast arranged in the makanvi khana in a beautiful garden of the region the trusted men not so open to alcohol as well babar has written about his awkward situation ye must quote hai those who about me could never drink openly on my account if they ever did drink they did perhaps only once in 40 days with door strap fast and under a 100 fears never as there were now invited here to they drank with a 100 precautions sometimes calling off my attention sometimes making a screen of their hands notwithstanding that i had given them permission to follow common custom because this party was given by one standing me as a father or elder brother people brought in weeping willows you know what this is like babar is that khadu uncle in indian weddings with a koi daro nahi piyega and then you know all the boys and girls who wants to drink they will be like uh, uncle ji hum log bahar ja rahe hain kuch kaam hai aur fir wo hotel ke piche ek gaadi hoti thi aur gaadi ke andar hai na daru ki batli rakhi hoti thi aur sab log ja ke udhar eh baraf lana andar se shaadi se aur aise baraf dal ke daru pee rahe babar sounds to, uh, like a khadu uncle but fir isse behoda kaise ban gaya wo yeah and then, then now uh... Uh, as he, as he further go, because this is the phase where he is now first inducted into the idea of what it means to have wine parties hmm. and slowly it catches up and uh, towards the end of his life uh, he further decides that i will abstain because uh, when this phase of the humayu comes up uh, when he is not well so he suddenly becomes again very islamic in nature and he uh, those things are of course not captured into in this uh, book because this ends uh with his second attempt to enter into hindustan which was a failed one hmm. uh but then he beg- uh, then he abstains it and so he uh, again he was full of a lot of remorse when uh, humayu was not well he uh, saw a lot of issues that maybe it was because of my own sins that this has come upon humayu etc so and uh, i uh, he didn't live much longer after that So like why? So he basically succumbed to peer pressure, like yeah, uh, yeah, many yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. And was... he was like, "Chalo, abhi daru maro." Yeah, it and was more like that. So and he would uh, drink every time and feel bad about it or terrible yeah. about it. Yeah. But see, what does it say? This is like Pakistan. Honestly, this is what Pakistan is today, right? Pakistan. Mein, I talk to so many Pakistanis who drink, man. Pakistan. Mein, uh, Pakistan. I'm not talking about Pakistanis outside Pakistan. Yeah. I'm talking about Pakistanis in Pakistan. Saale udhar baat ke beoda marte hain. आर्मी का कोई ऐसा जनरल नहीं होगा जो बेवड़ा नहीं मारता आर्मी तो इज नॉन फॉर दारूबाजी दे आर नोट वो एक पाकिस्तान का एक फेमस रीडर है यार उसका लीडर है उसका नाम बोल गया उसने अपनी एक स्पीच में बोला था हाँ मैं शराबी हूँ तुम्हारे जैसे खोता नहीं चूसता पता नहीं कौन था एक लीडर वो चेक करना मेरे को तो वो ये मतलब दिस इज सो एप्रोपो ऑफ इस्लामिक सोसाइटीज बिकॉज यू नो एल्कोहल इज अ the biggest sin yeah. in those societies yeah. and and it's ironical because you and i both don't drink and we are still uh, fine with people who drink around us i mean yeah. i don't care yeah. but yeah i mean islamic societies are so weird um but like how did you react when you found out ye to bewda hai yeah i was uh, because i uh, i had a very different opinion about babar initially because of course the first hand opinion was about uh, from the sources sources where the people around you uh they always said most of the uh, very uh, belittling thing about babar that uh, of course he was a jihadi and the, i never heard anything i never heard about the human side of babar too mm. because of course i i, I know that babar did uh, massive devastations when he came to bharat because his project was clear he was clear in his agenda when we touch upon the epilogue part of it where i have uh, mentioned that he saw himself third in the line after ghazni and gori yeah so he is clear what he is supposed to do he always referred to the unfinished agenda of taimur yeah so which was which comes from the uh, biographer yazdi who writes that it was to islamize the whole of the world because it is a dictate by the prophet muhammad so he has to do it so those aspects are there but apart from those aspects when you are trying to capture a biography of somebody which you are not at all expecting because when you hear those tales you 
only know about these things. You were never <laughs> looking into these angles which would erupt out of Babar Nama. I was expecting it to be more about uh, the campaigns. It would it would be more about the war times. It would be more about um, uh, the uh, attacks against the cafes, which which is mentioned in the later phases. But I expected more of that to be this to reflect in each and every day and daily life of Babar. But I found a very different, a very interesting character in Babar altogether because he had a very tragic life to start with. If you read the initial chapters, you will find that uh, none of his uncles are good to him. Yeah. Right. Even his mama, ma, who uh, later on comes to his side, Mahmood Khan, initially he's a very troubling guy. Yeah. So was uh, Ahmad. Ahmad dies and uh, uh, later on his other uncle, uh, who who is again not very supportive of Babar, but he has a very tra tragic life, losing father at the age of 11, 12. And then trying to be the guardian of the city uh, mm. which he was ruling. And to meet the expectation because his father had a very good image and a rapport among the people. So that itself was a big challenging task. And uh, yeah, so I found this character very fascinating to be very honest. So you, uh, you in your appendices, you have uh, given these numbers for revenues of Hindustan. Yeah. Babar Drew. So you talk about different areas. Yeah. And uh, there's another work, very interesting work on Mughal period was W.H. Moreland. Yeah. He did the economic study yeah. uh, from Akbar to Aurangzeb. Akbar to Aurangzeb. So he also talks about how the income inequality yeah. increased under the so-called Mughals. Yeah. And this is, uh, again, uh, the first reference for this has been Angus Madison. Yeah. Because... Uh, Paul by Rok was also called Paul Rok. Paul Rok. Paul Rok. Paul Rokh, na? Yeah. Usne bhi na, history, yeah. economics ka. So, uh, because uh, it was okay that still if you are 25% share, uh, for a moment you believe that maybe that you can't blame the Timurids that okay, they are the good guys. Hmm. Let's believe for a while. But what really startled me was the number of GDP per capita growth. Because it was negative only in one phase. So I knew that British were worse to the people. But GDP per capita growth was not negative in that way. Yeah. Chusa. There was a forced production which we don't know about. They were they hoarded money. Like Irfan Habib says that Akbar was one of the largest hoarder of money. But because he was a very ambitious guy. Akbar had a very different... He's, a, he's very different in the league among all of the people. Hmm. So then there were a lot of... Part, they, these people hosted a lot of parties. Shah Jah was known for very expensive parties. And I have given this interesting um, uh, story about this uh, based on the primary sources, uh, whatever was available in that period around that Taj and the famine wala concern, where while the Taj was being built, they commissioned it for, again, I don't want to get on into these issues of Tejo Mohi because I don't have sources for it. Uh, I know that the project was commissioned for rupees, 41.8 million silver rupees. Uh, based on the sources and at the same time a famine had hit where uh, Lahori who is the chronicler of biography of Babar was a court historian he talks about that how they had destroyed the crops right it coming from their own account and it's just because they can't hold the malwa or the fertile land so they said if we can't have it let's destroy it and then the rain doesn't happen and the famine hits so of course a famine happened and then this guy is building a mausoleum for hmm. one of his beloved wife and we know that end of what conditions she died and uh, so she's not even the first in the many wives that yeah, existed right no no she is not and she died giving birth to 14th or uh, 14 child per yeah 14th is the number of uh, i may be wrong in 14 17 but it is was a number and certainly around 15 so she died out of, out of that and then he built a mausoleum for her Hmm. And then Muslim for a certain cause. So the point is that you know, blood of uh, it was built the blood of the Indians. The artisans were Indians because I got a very interesting data that Babur says that even to build the Muslim of Taimur, hmm. they had to get the artisans from Hindustan. Yeah. So, and that Muslim happens to be the largest structure, which is smaller than Taj Mahal. Hmm. So it speaks a lot about the whole thing that whether we really learned all the architecture or we never had artisans or we never had any indigenous techniques. 
it really puts a big question mark these things maybe that when i will further explore while i come to this era i will get more information about it but then why do you think when it comes to analysis of history right iske liye maine wo tujhe aaj jo whatsapp pe likha tha na yeah um with every historical figure whether it's babar i think aurangzeb mein like i'm very certain ki he was a param ghatiya kisam ka insaan there is no debate but akbar akbar at an early stage of his life was very different yeah and the latter half of his life the second half of his life last very, 30% of the yeah he was very different person yeah. now people change yeah people change due to personal transformations people change due to political inclinations people change because political inclination and personal transformation dono yeah. ho sakta hai and ambitions and ambitions kuch bhi ho sakta hai yeah. but the point is these are uh, like aurangzeb was so good he was like no tum mere se sirf nafrat karo main itna kharab aadmi hu mere se binda but the problem we have when we analyze these figures what i appreciate in this book is you 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 humanize babar she has a very good thing you have shown हाँ भाई बाद में दारू भी पीना शुरू हो गया ही ही स्वंग बोथ वेज एंड इट वॉज फाइन आई मीन आई थिंक इट इट एक्चुअली हेल्प्स बाबर इफ यू आर अलिबर एक्चुअली हेल्प्स बाबर इट डजेंट यू एक्चुअली ह्यूमनाइज हिम एंड शोन एज जस्ट अनदर एलिट थग हु हैड रिलीजियस जीलेटरी वेन ही नीडेड इट एंड वेन एवर ही डिड नॉट नीडेड जाके कोने में मार लो इट इट वॉज लिटरली लाइक दैट बट आज की डेट में this pick and choose and i'm not saying the marxists do it i mean so called hamari side bhi yahi ghatiya ban karti hai matlab they will pick up the worst verses so how do we analyze these people i have always wondered how do we analyze these people today when we look at them like i said i i i appreciate aurangzeb a lot because he he makes it so easy to dislike him yeah yeah and all these characters have so many nuances hmm and Uh, so uh, uh, in my first book launch itself i had made a point very clear that this book will not please right wing or left wing because right wing or left wing needs political masala that's yeah. how you become right or left but this book is entirely a history wing project yes so what it does is that it is a very objective biography of a man called babar in which uh, i try to cater to each and every nuance each and every layer Uh, which he had in his life and it is very important because a biography cannot be or else it cannot be biography or else the book could have been a jihadi project of babar or so i am not saying that that project cannot happen someone can do this but if i have taken the objective of uh, looking into this character in whole totality hmm. or whole entirety so in fact when jadunath sarkar also wrote about the people he tried to be very objective yeah it's very obvious that when you say for example you choose aurangzeb and aurangzeb has said done certain things that even if you would have done say five good things it doesn't matter because even if you have done committed a murder or if you committed a sin like that it's done right you can't say that i did a murder but ho oh, okay i have also done 100 good projects so it doesn't matter a murder is enough to really so when we are dealing with this characters like babar when we are dealing with this characters like akbar when we are dealing with characters like jahangir or ashok anybody for that matter so if you put all the colors color those colors will add by their own virtue will come out that which will automatically gets highlighted you need not work over it wo pura slate aapke samne aa jayega aap usko canvas ko dekh kar ke bata sakte ho ki वो इंसान कैसा था भारत के कंटेक्स्ट में वो इंसान कैसा था समरकंद के कंटेक्स्ट में एंड एवरी प्लेस विल हैव अ वेरी डिफरेंट कंटेक्स्ट एंड स्टोरी टू टेल एंड रिलेट टू दैट पर्सन एंड दिस पार्ट यू काफी डिटेल में यू मेंशन समरकंद या पोस्ट प्री या या एंड बिकॉज़ दोस वर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू एनालाइज दैट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ सोसाइटी दिस काइंड गाय वाज लिविंग इन एंड आई आई एम श्योर दैट रीडर्स माइट गेट कंफ्यूज्ड एट टाइम्स बिकॉज़ इवन आई वाज कंफ्यूज्ड देयर सो मेनी कैरेक्टर्स and when you are working on a project through the primary sources you just are not able to pick and choose many many of the times it becomes very tough to really choose that what i want to reject i choose not to reject most of a thing i have taken it all what babar has said like 
in hadith jaise for example bukhari said that i was given 6 lakh verses but i choose to write 6 uh, 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 around 6000 or 7000 uh, i wrote just 98 per- i wrote just 2% of the 100% so but we cannot do in objective biography we have to choose all of them so i am sure that readers might find it a bit challenging to recollect with all the characters but it was important to be brought in the way it has been fair enough now let's take a few questions by our live viewers who are very much uh... Okay, I'll start putting it on the screen so that it's easier to read. Many intellectuals such as Rameshwar Mishra, Pankaj says Akbar's father was Rana, Versal of Umar Kot. I want your thoughts on this statement. No, this uh, uh, someone else had also asked about it over Twitter long back, hmm. but uh, I right away had dismissed it, saying that you know there is no evidence for it because. Uh, the humayu was uh, it, they make a case that humayu was away and mm. then but that's not true if one looks at the whole chronology it it gets nullified it's not true okay so it's pretty much not yeah. possible babar said country ruled by mongols is worse than hell many malvi say temur was not a muslim sir i want your thoughts on this <laughs> uh, see i can't say speak on the part of the malvis but one thing is very clear that uh, temur recognize himself as a muslim so if you say that he is not a muslim so it doesn't make sense because he was clear what he is doing and his agendas were very clear and as per the islamic doctrine uh, it, it is that if you do hundreds of a sins okay uh, which is un islamic but for the larger good if you are there to establish your own caliphate and you are able to do it to spread islamism then you are done so uh, every other sin which you have committed will just get washed away as per the doctrine so mm. it does uh, so no one can recognize temur as i i want to know that which malvi says that temur was not a muslim mm. so someone <laughs> says babar supports lgbt rights yeah he does <laughs> yeah he had no option And the other person <laughs> has said babar was not a mughal or mongol he was a digambar who rose against protestant brahmin sabash 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 very good but okay. then how do we i know you're writing a second part about babar also but then you've been very open that you appreciate babar's poetry writing skills uh let's maybe the final section can be what else could you appreciate about babar because in the very beginning of the book you have said uh, uh reading about babar actually made me hum- uh, humanize the man far more yeah and uh, w- one aspect was certainly his poetry and his poetic skills which is just fabulous and i just fell for it it is really beautiful and at the same time uh, i really loved the way this man uh, really uh, organized this whole thing into a form of a diary which speaks even more about his organizational skills too a man who has been able to produce his own autobiography in the era when it was not a vogue to do the autobiography you will put it to your court historian he will do it so it again gives you an angle that perhaps this person was very well organized he knew what are his tasks he knew what to do and in fact uh, again this can be seen as a negative but i do see it as a positive that he was quite wary of uh, shaibani khan and he knew that i can never win from from him so whenever shaibani khan will come babar is here shaibani khan comes babar goes somewhere else hmm. so it's like a tom and jerry game yeah this is in the uh, mid part of the book yeah shaibani and khan. it goes on and on in fact he comes to kabul because shaibani has been troubling him and from kabul he is looking to move to hindustan of course <coughs> he wants to finish the unfinished agenda of taimur but at the same time it's because shaibani has been poking nose in kabul now so he wants to move further east so it uh, he was very organized man he knew what are his strength that's why he didn't uh, mess up with shaibani khan to a great extent he knew that perhaps i can not win though he did this madness once when he had somehow got the samarkand back <laughs> how do you assess him as a war strategist i would say that as a war strategist if you ask me he was a good uh, he was really a good war strategist he did make very good strategies because uh, see he is into the war from the age of 12 he won a lot yeah he won a lot 
he is winning it from the age of 12 and the only trouble he always faced was in front of Shaibani Khan. Now, there can be two ways to look at it. One can call him coward. One can call him loser. That's fine. Of course, he was uh, being coward also is a trait, which is he didn't feel that I can win the battle in front of me. I can be coward in front of him. He took it. So I would say that he was strategically very clear that what he needs to do, as I said earlier, that maybe that he would have never won from Shaibani Khan. So even to know that which battle you are supposed to pick is also a part of a strategy. Maybe that it doesn't good to do good to your people. It doesn't do good to your empire. But at times, it may be good from a point of view that you are at least safe. Fair enough. Uh, so, last, before we go, Babri Masjid. <laughs> so, basically, I am going to deal with it in with a lot of nuances in my upcoming book. And I have got a lot of materials pro against about it because uh, when I say that, of course, so uh, part two may cover. Over. Yeah, because yeah. this is not in the realm of history of yeah. this part, right? Yeah, because it's in a later period. This is the making of Babar. This book can be seen as a making of Babar. This book can tell someone exactly how Babar became powerful enough, or even not that powerful, he became a, a person enough who would be able to get into Hindustan defeat Lodi and establish again a lot of people get in awe that perhaps he established a big empire no it was a very small empire uh, Timurid Gurkhani and not the Mughal which he would do which can only be told if you know this you will understand that why he came here why he built the empire the way he built why he wanted to come to Hindustan <laughs> those answers come from this book okay so before we wrap it up uh where are your book launches now? Batao sabko. So I'm looking to cover the city of Mumbai and uh, it's from next month onwards. Okay. So uh, right now I'm not <coughs> on a spree of uh, covering up uh, the online sectors like the podcast, the uh, getting the new channels, etc, etc. And again, the launching spree will start from April. This was strategically done because I wanted the people to have read the book by then mm. so that a few people also are there in the launch where we can discuss the book a bit more rather than me just unveiling the book and just saying some good things about the book and people saying good things about me mm. so that we can have some argument, some cross-questioning. We can have certain... It's actually a better idea intellectually. Yeah. yeah. So then my book will meet its objective because uh, this book is just not written to gain certain claps. Fair enough. So, uh, next month, Mumbai, Delhi, mein kar rahe ho? yeah, Delhi would be there on the trot and, and Bangalore, obviously, Bangalore, Bangalore is done, Bangalore is done, yeah, that one because I want to do it early because uh, it's the home, my home, I stay there, I live there. So, I thought that let's start from there, then take a break for a month and a half and then re resume again. So, Bob, so whenever you start, uh, obviously, there will be book signings, I'm assuming, yeah, in the launches, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. and also I will be doing some small uh, book signings in small bookstores. Like day after tomorrow, I'd be in Pune. I will be signing a, a Empire store or something. Okay. I will put a Twitter about it. Okay. <laughs> a very small store. So, but uh, uh, I just uh, I'm looking at the opportunity. Whichever bookstore gives me opportunity, I'll go drop down there, sign, and if people come across, I am open to discuss and. They, they, other people who have brought the book from Amazon or something, I'm very free, open to meet them in a particular designated places. Even if they want to call me somewhere altogether, I'm open to come and interact. Okay, great. So, guys, uh, before we wrap it up, uh, I just want to remind everyone in the description, you will have Abbas's Twitter handle. So, if you want to know what's uh, where Abbas is going to be as far as in regards to the book is concerned, follow him on social media. You can uh, go follow him and he keeps on updating uh, all the time. Also, uh, uh, I've left the Amazon link uh, to buy his book. I think Kindle copy is coming, right, Abbas? Yes, Kindle. Kindle copy is coming. So, uh, if, uh, I mean, uh, especially for, for, for... This is Penguin. So, you guys will also get this book. Penguin has an international publication. Um, they are not selling it outside. Okay, right so now. for the people, Kindle. For the people, Kindle. And Garuda is selling it for the Garuda's bookstore. He's making book available outside India too. Okay. So outside India, ho ne wali hai. Ho hai. Garuda ho is hai. Selling. so you just go on Garuda Prakashan and uh, you can order this yeah. book and it will be shipped all yeah. across, uh, yeah. all across anywhere the in the world. Yeah. So because I have a very big uh, 
आउटसाइड इंडिया लिस्नर बेस तो वो लोग बोलते हैं कि हमको कैसे मिलेगी तो भैया किंडल से खरीद सकते हो या ये गरुड़ा प्रकाशन की वेबसाइट पे जाके ले लेना आवाज दिस वाज अ फैंटास्टिक रीड आई हैड अ लॉट ऑफ फन रीडिंग दिस तो दिखाओ जरा मुझे वापस कॉपी सो भैया ये है बुक जाओ अगर हार्ड कॉपी लेनी है तो इसकी हार्ड कॉपी लेना ये किताब की इट्स अ वंडरफुल कवर बाय द वे आई हैव टू से इट्स बीन ब्लर्ड बाय अमीश विक्रम अश्विन द ग्रेट विवेक देव रॉय हैज ब्लर्ड द बुक सो आई वुड हाईली रिकमेंड ऑल ऑफ यू टू बाय दिस बुक and uh, abbas uh, all the best it has Thank always you. been a pleasure to talk to you 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 are uh, one of those rare people who actually um, use rationality uh, which is very rare for the indian non left <laughs> because uh, we have a serious rationality crisis so you know uh, i always say this to vikram i was like aise aise microscope leke dhoondna padta hai logo ko jin ki books ko main soch soch ke darta hu main promote karne ke liye but tumhare sath vikram ke sath kuch logo ke sath aisa dar nahi lagta hai ki unki book promote kar sakte hain so i wish you all the best i look forward to part 2 now thank you um, we are looking to release it on jan 22 2025 hmm so let's see <laughs> very good mere ko bhej dena main pad lunga so sure. guys we'll wrap up now once again you can follow him on twitter by the book if you are outside india go on garuda prakashan they will give you the book outside india and if you want to support me the charvak podcast you can become a member uh, whether on patreon on youtube or on fanmo go join the membership program समबड़ी अडास कुशल भाई आपकी बुक कब आएगी आज की पॉडकास्ट में भी भैया मेरी बुक ऐसा है कि ये महीने वो टाइप सेटिंग फर्स्ट राउंड सेकेंड राउंड री रीडिंग जो भी होता है वो प्रूफ रीडिंग करना और बुक प्रिंट में चले जाएगी ये महीने अप्रैल फर्स्ट वीक तक बुक आ जाएगी बाहर जब आएगी मैं अनाउंस कर दूंगा तब आप लोग ले लेना और अगर चारवक पॉडकास्ट की मर्चेंडाइज लेनी है तो वो खरीदने जाने के लिए आपको कुशल पे जाना पड़ेगा and if you can't do anything and just want to watch the content uh, fine just like this video leave the comment in the comment section subscribe to the charvak podcast channel if you are an audio listener leave a rating on your audio platform this is all i can ask for usse zyada main kuch nahi de sakta aise galiyan zarur do galiyan doge agar comment section mein to algorithm mein badi madad hoti to ji khol ke galiyan dena babar ko mujhe kuch farak nahi padta मेरे को नहीं देना वो एक्चुअली मुझे भी दे देना मुझे उससे भी कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ता है एंड टूडेज पॉडकास्ट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू एंड बाय द रेगुलर एंडिंग म्यूजिक आई हैड केप्ट द ग्रेटेस्ट क्लिप इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ ह्यूमैनिटी एंड जस्ट फॉर द रिकॉर्ड दिस पॉडकास्ट इज नॉट स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय डाबर दिस बुक इज अबाउट डाबर बट आई वॉन्ट टू एंड टूडेज पॉडकास्ट विद दिस आई विल टे आई विल सी यू गाइज अगेन विद अनदर डिस्कशन टेक केयर टाटा बायू